Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yep, it is the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician, an addiction medicine specialist, and let's not forget the Hippocratic Oath, Drew. Yeah. Drew has announced that he's had um, some of the worst gas of his life. Yeah, I'd say so. Tonight? So this is the, the mantra, do no harm, gets challenged. Yeah, this could do harm, physically and emotionally. Oh, oh yes, make no doubt about it. I just played 20 games of basketball, so I'm winded. What, so, what, now, what does 20 games of basketball mean? Four quarters, 20 times? I, I mean that uh, me and uh, the man show guys just shot hoop for the last three hours straight, and then I ran over here. So the point is, is I think my white blood cell count is uh, a little low. Yeah. I'm a little low on fluids. And a good fart could take me out. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So Mancho Crew is working hard again as usual? How dare you? How dare you, sir? Mm, sorry. Finish work, then we played some basketball. You wouldn't know what it's like to hang out with How guys. How dare you? Thank you. Giovanni? Uh, hey, yes. Uh, Giovanni? Yes. What's yes. up? You're uh, 16. Yes. Um, kind of a strange problem here. Um, my girlfriend has a food fetish. Mm-hmm. Where she almost always has to have food while we are having sex. What do you mean have it? Well, yeah, what does that mean? Like you know, like eating it. Eating what? Like like sitting down with a tray and fork well, and knife? No, no, no. But you know, like she'll like me eating a sandwich while yeah. we're having sex, and she needs it. She she tells me that she needs it to feel comfortable, and I want to know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All that. right, you idiot. Drew, stop picking guys for the first call of the night, would you? Right. You're right. You get a bunch of jack-offs are talking about nothing. Well, no, wait a minute. Oh, I don't see any girl. Oh, here's one. That's a, uh, try this one. Jade? No, no. Jade sounds no. like a stripper to me. All right. You want to try Chris? Yeah. All right, if it's a dude, though. Chris? Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Hold on there, Chris. See if we can get some ladies going in here. Freedom? Yeah. I'll try that. Could that be a uh, gal? Freedom? Yes. Ooh. Hello? Hi. Hello, baby. Hi, you guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, our pleasure. Um, okay, my question is not so super serious, but um, I'm 25 years old, and I still haven't had sex yet. Um, I just... Uh, let's see. I, um, I, I'm not really interested in, in having a relationship, or I, I've never... Not that I'm not interested, but um, I've never, I've never really been to my, my the rest of my family and my friends. They're all very healthy sexually. Uh, I've and never they, been to my the rest of my family has been healthy sexually. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, that's what you call a tangential thought process. You a little nutty, baby. I'm a little nutty, not yeah. too much. You've been told that though, right? I, I have, yeah. You on any medication? I'm no, uh. Uh-uh. But you've been begged to take some, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind a little bit if it would help me out. Uh, is is your name Freedom? Yes. You come from a bunch of hippies? I do, yeah. 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 Shocking. And the the family's very healthy sexually? Well, I... Well, they, they sit around their clothes off and they <laughs> smoke pot. And... <laughs> They're normal. Yeah, that would be normal. Okay. And why is it you think you haven't had sex yet? It's not a religious thing, right? No, no. And I'm not waiting for marriage. And I, I mean, I... When I was young, um, most of my girlfriends were fairly, um, I don't want to say slutty, but they, right. they, I come from a small town, and uh-huh. yeah, everybody pretty much did everybody. Uh-huh. Um, and I decided pr- pretty young that I was going to wait until I met someone that, you yeah. know. Okay, well, what's your question I, I had the same thing. It's just everyone else decided. It wasn't. I yeah. decided for you. I didn't get a vote. Well, I had like, it was imposed. I, <laughs> I'd like to... Um, I would like to have a relationship. I, I, I feel I've I feel fairly. I've never felt like I really needed one, and I thought, you know, it was okay. Freedom. Let's let's get focused, dear Freedom. What can we help you with? Well, I want to know if if you, if if maybe it's um, some kind of chemical imbalance. I, I doubt it. If you're otherwise healthy medically, uh, you're not on medicine. No healthy. But the chemical imbalance uh, is a relative term. You could put me down for chemical yeah, for, imbalance for yeah. freedom, though. Yeah. For for. But what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. Nope. Oh. Working with the youngins, though, with right? With the youngins, yeah. Yeah. Shaping and the uh, youth of tomorrow, or the youth of today for the yeah. world of tomorrow. 
I yeah, I right. use my energy on right. that, and are, I, are, I've never had any energy w- for men. I wh- what do you, right. what well, do you look you like? How do you look? What was that? How what do you I, look? How do I look? Yeah, Adam. Um, I, I'm oh. you know, I brown right. hair and five oh. eight. And I start with the hair color. That's trouble. <laughs> yeah, you big gal. What? You a big gal? No, no. I'm fair. I'm fairly thin. I've never had a weight problem. All right. I'm not ugly, Adam. That's not the reason. Just checking. It's not that I can't get laid. Right. <laughs> Everyone who doesn't get laid says that, though. But yeah, right. Well, right. it could be. Maybe. No, you're a girl. What? Listen. Yeah, why you're a girl. You, therefore, that. Therefore, that, that yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about uh, you ever talked to a therapist or a psychiatrist? I have. I have. A few years ago, I saw one for a while, and um, didn't really help me much. They were. She was kind of. I thought she needed therapy more than I did, so I, I, I discontinued. But um, it's always ironic when they spaz out when they're explaining about their san their sanity. You know, yeah. like when they go, I I saw a therapist for a while, but I thought she needed a therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, baby, you need a male therapist. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not sure she could tolerate that. How about uh, getting a dude therapist and uh, just uh, leave yourself open? I mean, start going out. Hey, you have friends, you know, drink some wine coolers. <laughs> I don't know. You sure you want to see freedom on, on anything? Uh, like a six or Bartles and James oh. at uh, two in the morning? Talking about, uh, talking about my aura and how it keeps changing colors? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'd say back in it. Uh, you got any advice? You're just going to let her float out there. No? I need a therapist. Therapist? All right. Jade? Hi. Hey, you're 29. Yep. There you go. What's up? I'm not a stripper. <laughs> I heard that. All right. Hurry then. <laughs> um, I am addicted to Vicodin, and I'm ready to quit. have been for a while. Mm-hmm. And I get a few days, and then the withdrawal symptoms get really bad. And then I just go back. Well, the withdrawal from Vicodin is the easiest part of stopping Vicodin. As miserable as it is, I can detox anyone from any opiate in about five days. You and can? Yeah. I need that so bad. Drew, well, you don't. Drew uh, detoxed me from Vicodin during a commercial break. Well, it takes a few more days, a few more hours than that. But, but your, your preoccupation with the detox is misplaced. You think? Because I, the, I have the desire. Jade? Yeah, I know you do. the battle right there. And no, no, no. No, it's not, unfortunately. With opiates, the, most opiate addicts want to quit in the worst way possible. They just can't. And the detox is easy compared with staying off the drug. Really? Because I have in the past. I quit when I had a baby. That yeah. was easy because yeah. I didn't want to damage, you know, the Yeah, and, it, and you stayed off it, and then what'd you do? Um, went back on. Yeah, and I, that's the problem. I have a legitimate reason for it. Well, then you're not. Then you're going to go back on it again. No, I can do because I had surgery recently. All right. Well, baby, you got it all wrapped up. Then you got all the answers. No, I need. What do you need us for? I need to get past the withdrawals. Jade, no, you no, you don't. You're wasting your time if you just focus on the withdrawal. Okay, what should I focus on? The recovery from the addiction. Okay. And you need to spend several, preferably a couple of weeks in a program. Okay. Uh, the withdrawal will be the smallest part of the, of the challenge. Okay. And uh, I'm all for that. You know, um, need to know like what type of program. An addiction recovery program. There's several in your area. Glendale Aventus has one. Los Encinas has one. Okay, Glendale. Okay. Los how many? Encinas. How many a uh, day are you taking? Um, I used to. Oh gosh, take like. Actually, I was doing worse than Vicodin. I was doing something called Norco, which is equivalent to that's, two yeah. regular Vicodins. When you take two, that's four. I mean, it was terrible. Yeah, right. I would take like six to eight a day, and then recently, um, I wanted to quit. But I was getting sick, so I was having one in the morning, which didn't do anything for me, but, but except kept me from getting sick, and then it would have one in the evening, uh-huh. and none at work or anything like that. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess. You're somewhere near the Burbank Airport? <laughs> uh-huh. You hear that, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got that uh, Piper Cup coming down. Yeah. Uh, basically in your porch. So I know I have willpower because I Jade, have... Jade, willpower has nothing to do with this disease. The only... The only place for willpower to be useful is to get your ass to meetings and to listen to what people tell you to do. That's where will is useful. Otherwise, this is a disorder of the willpower. It's completely overwhelmed by the drives that the opiates cause, and it's easily overwhelmed. Yeah, and by the way, when you're addicted to something and you start breaking down the different elements, which is, you know, I know I have drive, I know I have willpower, and I know I I have (laughs) staying power. (laughs) And, you know, it's like, listen, you're, you're hooked. Get into a program. Yeah, and, and addiction. Drew, that's what he's telling and, and, you. And addiction is a biology that's well understood now. And if you don't, if you don't believe you're an addict, well, then stop. And if you can't stop, 
then it's a very powerful biology that requires intensive treatment. That's right. And Drew's laughing all the way to the bank. Chris? I wish. <laughs> Chris? Yeah? You're 21. What's up? Um, my girlfriend, well, I was in jail like a little while ago for like two or three months. Mm -hmm. And uh, my girlfriend admitted to cheating on me with three girls. I see. Parole violation? What got you in the hotel? Probation count? violation. Oh, probation, yeah. okay. oh, probation okay. violation. Yeah, I was good. way off. And yeah, yeah. What were you in the first time for? Well, um, second degree assault with a handgun. I see. Oh, good times. Yeah, oh, yeah. What, what were you doing? Well, I was only 16 when it happened. Oh, well, that excuses it. Yeah. That makes it much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I just thought I was cool, so I was carrying a gun around in this. This kid started a fight with me, and he was a lot bigger than me, so I got scared. And I just, I didn't shoot him. I just, like, hit him with it. Not just a little pistol weapon? Yeah, just a little pistol weapon. Good time. All right, so now you're out. Yeah. And um, your girl has uh, hooked up with a couple of ladies while you're in. Yep. And this disturbs you? No, she's less interested in having sex with me. And I was just wondering if, like... Could she? I knew she was bisexual when I first started going out with her. Uh -huh. We've been together for a year and a half, mm -hmm. but and we used to have sex a lot, and oh. but now it's like once a week, yeah. once every two weeks. Yeah. How old is she? She's nineteen. She's a little chaotic, though, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I mean, not relative to you. I mean, she's not <laughs> doing any hard time, but she's a little. She's got some energy. This one, right? Yeah. Yeah, she does. What drugs is she doing? What? What drugs is she doing? She does. She actually doesn't do drugs. Hmm. She drinks. Oh, okay. Well, there's one. Okay. And uh, you guys don't have any kids, do you? No, no. Don't, please, don't have any kids. You understand that concept, Chris? I, I understand. Good. Are you, do you have contraception? No, no. Chris? How are you planning not to have kids then? Well, I don't know. I don't think she can have kids. Why? Well, because we've been having sex for a year and a half. Well, she will. I knew it. She I will. knew it. She will have kids. Chris? Yeah. Time. Chris, listen to me. Listen. Do not have a kid with this crazy bisexual alcoholic chick. <laughs> and if she was on the phone, I'd say, do not have a kid with this crazy felon. Yeah. You guys should not be having a kid, and you have to take some responsibility for your life, Chris. I mean, yeah, I you're not going back into prison, right? No. I'm... Hopefully. You're getting yourself... Hold on. Drew, did you far? <laughs> Holy Christ. Holy Christ. Jesus Christ, I wish I was in the can. The joint would be better than uh, the studio right now. Are you kidding me? There's going to be a full-scale riot. Attica! Jesus Christ. I warned you. Wow. Oh, wow. Hey, Drew, come on. Seriously, man. I'm winded. I've had a long day. You know, easy. Chris? Yeah. Drew farted on me. Yeah, that's pretty. We've sick. been waiting, we've been waiting oh, years for this oh, moment. Oh, Andy, are you feeling good about this? Jesus, Jesus, this is so bad. <laughs> what? What? I wish I could breathe through my ass or something. Oh, oh, oh! It's a, it's a two stager. What the? Was that a second one? Same one? Oh my God! The lingerer. Oh my God, Chris. Yeah. I'm talking to you through my shirt right now. Okay. Okay. Um, don't get her pregnant, and you ain't going to marry her, and she's chaotic, and you think you're going to be together forever, but she's bisexual, and something's up with her. You focus on you. You got to get a good job. You got to fight to keep it. You got to take care of things. So at least yeah. get that morning after pill around oh, to keep oh, that around you guys. Oh. But get her on birth control. Oh. I warned you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. What, what, I, oh, what? Like, that's going to hold up in court? Uh, Your Honor, I told the guy this before is, I bludgeoned him like a uh, seal. This, this is self-defense. I mean, I, I've been through this with you a couple of times. Hey, that's true, but it's so much funnier when I do it. This is not funny. I really, I need something. I need a charcoal patch that's sewn into my shirt that I can Probably. breathe through. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need some uh, vapor rub that I can put on my upper lip. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm being offended by someone else's fart. <laughs> I mean, that's gruesome. Right. And then you know what? And then I get all worked up and I get out of breath and I <laughs> suck in more. I got to try to go into some sort of tranquil, zen type state where my heart is barely beating. Where I lower my pulse like sting. Right, right. Okay. I'm going to try to do that.
Okay. Okay, Cam? Hello? Yeah. Hi, Cam. What's up? Hello. Hi. Who is this? Okay. Cam? Cam? Hello? <laughs> yeah, Cam. What's going on? Um, is this Dr. Drew? Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm... There was a guy on your show a couple weeks ago, and he said he was masturbating four times a day, and Oof. you said that that was a lot for a guy. It's a lot. And I'm masturbating... Today I masturbated 11 times. 11 times? Yeah, and I usually do at least two. Right. I'm, but and I'm not... This is ser totally serious. I know it sounds... Well, what's... Uh, with uh, Easter coming up, you're making a run, or how's it go? I mean, why 11 today? Just because I had the day off. I see. Okay. Good times. And uh, you think that's too much? Well, I know it's too much because, um, yeah, it is too much. No, I don't know any other anybody else that matters. Are you sexually active? Yeah. Or do you have, are you compulsive that way? Do you have sex with lots of guys? Um, not anymore. I'm trying to get out of that phase. But were you I, sexually abused when you were a child? Um, see, not that I can remember, but yeah. I don't remember a lot. My uh, older sister, my older brother. Tell me things oh. sometimes I don't remember. Like what? You know, let me tell you about abuse. I was nasally raped by Drew's anus just moments ago. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, this is this is scary. I don't like being on the air. But um, I don't, I, they don't tell me things bad. They just, you know, like stupid things like, you know, trips to Disneyland or whatever that I don't even remember. So I know that I don't remember some things from my childhood. So maybe I don't remember being sexually abused. Well, something. that may be. But is there any manic depression in your family? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot, and there's a lot of alcoholism. And All right, so this either this may be addiction, it may be bipolar, it may be consequence of abuse, or it may be some combination. But being sexually compulsive is, is caused by these sorts of phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And it's not anything you have to be ashamed of, but it's something that if it's causing you to induce, to, to interact in ways that are self-destructive, like lots of partners and these sorts of things you don't really want to be doing, it's well, I don't really have lots of partners anymore, but I mean... No, who's got it gets, time? It, it's, it gets old when you're always home masturbating, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have time to do anything else. What do you have? Do you have a vibrator? Yeah, I have, yeah. I have a vibrator and I have a lot of porn. What's its name? Actually, I, I named it a couple of times, so I can never keep its name. So I it see. not have a name right now. But, um, and... Um, oh, a real, real big payoff to that one question, wasn't there? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm you, sorry. I see. No, it's not your fault. I just thought we were going to get a nice name out of that thing. And what kind of porn do you watch? Um, actually, it's it's um regular porn. It's straight porn. Okay. Why does that take ten minutes? By the way. Ten minutes. What takes ten minutes? Okay, baby. How about a little therapy? Okay. Or, or, or maybe you know, you, maybe talk to somebody that deals with sexual compulsivity and bipolar illness. I mean, there there are specialized treatments specifically for that. Yeah, you know what this show is really famous for? What these long, circuitous they go nowhere. Basic answer. Yeah, yeah. Like you go like, um, what'd you do today? Uh, today? What do you mean? Uh, that's an interesting question. I uh, well, well, I'll be honest. I went to work. <laughs> and you're like. Yeah. Okay, I thought something was coming there. Well, it's, it's it's we've talked about this a lot. It's that it's that I, I'm not going to answer the man's questions. Yeah, a lot of that. I understand it's a little bit tricky, like what kind of porn, but just say yeah, straight porn. I, was, I thought it was going to get some lesbian or something. In the, All right, so therapy there, Drew. Well, uh, uh, again, yeah. if it's bipolar, it might be medication. Well, if it's sexual compulsivity, psychiatrist they're, they're first, twelve step program, doctor yes. first, psychiatrist, yes, then psychiatrist, yes. Um. I'm I'm going to need some extra therapy this week for the uh, post traumatic stress disorder. You've you may have PTSD if you survive. Yeah, I'm going to be scared to be in a room like like uh, two years from now. I'll be at a party. Someone will like, close the door. No, 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 shut the door. Don't shut it. <laughs> Joey. 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 Yeah. What's up? Hey, yeah. hi guys. We got full moon today. Yeah, no, that's a few nights ago. All right, Joey. You're 32. What's up? Well, uh, last night you were talking to a 14-year-old girl who lost her virginity, and you asked her if she drank or had some pot before, and she said she had smoked a little doobie. No, no. The deal was... She said she, she drank, didn't no, she? Yeah, I, I remember this call. She was saying that most 14-year-olds that act out you know, it's all of a sudden with a guy uh -huh. attach a lot of fantasy to the guy, and he's going to be great. He's going to be my savior. He's gonna be, I'm going to marry him. And her thing was, hey, I just wanted to have sex, and it just sounded interesting and it was sort of a very arousing experience for her. And I thought, oh, addict, that's an addict. So I well, knew she was doing drugs when she uh, yeah. did Yeah. Doctor Drew, you use this expression, distraction and arousal. 
I think that was it, something like I that. I might use words like that. And and so I started thinking about that. And I always like to, to get high before I have sex. Yeah. It's not that I have to. I don't have to smoke pot. But I don't want to have sex without smoking pot. Well, then you have to. Well, I, it, it, sex with, when I'm not high it pales in comparison to when I'm high. It's it's so much better. All yeah, right, I'll I've, buy that. <laughs> how how much pot do you smoke when you're not, when you're not screwing though? Um, well, I, I probably smoke pot a couple of times a week. Yeah, maybe four or five. Uh, maybe some weeks four or five, but some weeks uh, I, I'll go a couple of weeks without smoking at all. No, not not very often. Not that often. It's been a long time. That that's a, all that's right. a stretch. How long have you been smoking the weed? Who? Twenty years. Been a while. Twelve, fifteen yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And what are the drugs? Are you on medication or something now? No. Are you doing other drugs? Well, I used to do coke, but I don't do yeah. that anymore. Anything else right now? Alcohol? No, huh? All right. Alcohol doesn't really interest me. All right. Now, how's the weed treating you? I mean, you uh, you it working? Mellows, mellows me out. You know, it feels right. feels like I can be me. Okay. You, the guy who smokes a lot of weed. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you, yeah. you, the Hesher. Is it is it working less well than it used to? Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's that's part of the dependency syndrome with marijuana. And what eventually will start happening, you'll start getting depressed, and you'll start smoking more pot because the real me is is not this depressed guy. Okay, Drew, this sounded like reefer madness. Now. Well, it is. That's what's going to happen. That's hey, just where it goes. Hey, Joey. Yeah. You uh, you got yourself a girlfriend or a wife? I used to be married, got divorced. I see. But you're working now. Yeah. What was you, the divorce about? Out of curiosity. Uh, not enough good sex. What else was she complaining about? No, I was complaining. She she didn't want to have sex. She didn't like it. Really? And what was her complaint with the relationship? Anything? Uh, she didn't have a lot. She didn't want to end it. I did. Interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, nice uh, dead end you went down there, Joe. No, it was interesting. Yeah, sure it was. Joey? Yeah. I know, but you were getting at something. You didn't get to it. What was that? No, I'll yell at him later. Don't worry about him. <laughs> I, got a, I, I got a whole laundry list of things. I'm starting with his anus, and I'm working myself up. <laughs> It's actually my rectum. It's, it's rectum, yeah. yes, not the anus. What's the difference between the anus and the rectum? Is the rectum in the anus? Pass the anus? We get the picture again? No. I don't the anus see is if just I the it's sphincter. a different number of letters. The anus is the sphincter. Yeah. Okay. Rectum is where things are curing. N yeah, there's some curing going on. Rectum? Yeah. Crap. Yeah, almost skill them. Yeah, you, you're like, uh, you really got like half a smoked ham up there right now, curing. Joey. So, so do you... Joey, yeah, keep smoking the weed. You're doing fine, buddy. Right, right. Do you, do you think I'm addicted to it? Sounds like uh, it. Yeah, something's going on. Uh, you don't sound badly addicted. You don't fit the. You're only sort of marginally fitting the profile. That's why I was thinking you might be on some other medications or doing something else to sort of gratify that system. All right, but what about a guy like Joey here who is not smoking every day? He, although it's a little. Uh, calm yeah, down. A yeah. little more than he thinks, than yeah. he admits. Yeah. Says he can take a couple of weeks off, although he doesn't take too many weeks off. Yeah. But he really enjoys his weed, and he likes to smoke it when he's having sex, and yeah. it's a good sensation for him. Yeah. Can a guy like this keep an eye on himself? Here's, here, maybe. And the problem with, with Joey's situation is there's nothing to motivate him to stop or to get better, so he's not going to. Right? No, and he likes and, it when he has sex. And what's going to happen is, and this is what I was predicting, is that there's going to be consequences down the line from this. The years of exposure to this will have consequences, and right. that's when he'll he'll start needing to do something about this. So when that time comes, he will. Maybe. Okay. All right, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to go uh, vomit in a ficus plant right outside the door. Drew? Yeah. Tell what I'd like to do. I'd like to give you a, a hot coffee enema, and then I would like you to lie flat on your back, and I will stomp <laughs> on your stomach, wringing you dry of all gas. That would be comfortable. More okay. comfortable than what I'm dealing with now. All right. We'll be back after this. Hi, this is David Spade, and when I'm driving around listening to the radio, if there's absolutely nothing on any other station, I listen to Loveline with Adam and Drew, because I'm naughty. Yes, he is. Nice. Phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew over there, the ass man. And I'm uh, your humble host, Adam Carolla. I brought down hum humbled tonight, humble yeah. host. Now, I got, uh, I got three matches in oh, front of me. This is like Survivor. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you, the last, the last match, yeah. you know what I'm going to do with it? Uh, shove it up my ass. Uh, hold on, let me grab a scratch pad. That's, that's not a bad plan. All right. Now, uh, when I liked the last match, because I can't chance putting it out and 
being absent of flame yeah. after that, in case right. another one you comes down the pipe. You fire. Go <laughs> pick out a piece of yeah. furniture or yeah. something okay. and just kind of keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's uh, get back to the phones. Are we really working Easter? We got to work Easter? Really? Man, man. Am I, am, I, am I surprised at that every year? Or do we always work Easter? I guess we do. <laughs> we, uh, do we always work Easter? I don't think so. I always thought we had Easter off. Yeah. Now, I'm a very religious man. Oh, I know. Oh, spiritual. That's how I describe you when people ask about you. Yeah. And uh, that is my and, people's and, Sabbath. And tonight, I'm going to see to it that you have a spiritual experience. Oh, my God. I may have an out 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 of body experience we worked last year on easter right that's why we should have this easter off okay janice yes you're 39 yes what's up i'm i'm trying to figure out why my doctor did not want to give me the morning after pill did he say and why or she he asked me why don't you just use regular birth control well that's a viable question because it's only 70 percent effective and if you want birth control if you want to be prepared you should be on the pill i'm i'm not that active with my spouse interesting it's very very rare how often is it um once every three months top uh -huh. same guy or just a same, sailor same, blows same into town guy. Hmm. same guy where's he He's living in the same house. He's just talking very nasty to me all the time, and it's not very arousing. <laughs> you got to like him. Yeah. So is this your husband? Yes. So you give it to him four times a year? When he's pleasant and... But they're, they're, this is not a good situation, let's face it. Pardon me? The, the relationship is, is very disturbed. Yes. Yeah. How about you get out of the relationship? I, I've been thinking about that, yes. Yeah, that, that would be a much more viable question than more appropriate contraception because the, the morning after pill is not meant... I was met. wondering why my doctor was like that. Well, it, I also have a, a couple other questions. Well, let me just say that he probably was looking for contraception rather than emergency backup measures for you. Okay. okay. Do you have any kids? Two. Mm -hmm. How old are they? Uh, six and seven. How does he treat them? He is... Nice most of the time, but sometimes he has little tantrums. Okay, what are your other questions? My other questions is about um, UAs and niacins with uh, marijuana. I've heard that, and, and you know, testing. Mm hmm. And I also want to confront Alan because he always tells the women not to go have more babies, and he doesn't tell the men not to go have more babies. Zip it, you nag! Okay, Alan. Um, <laughs> a uh, screwball? Yes. Earth to screwball? Uh, okay, r remember, I mean, uh, hold on, hold on there. Okay. Remember eh, about 13 minutes ago when we had the guy who was the uh, felon who was released from prison who uh, called in? turn the radio down. I couldn't oh. hear everything. All right. I told that idiot not to have any kids about 13 times. Okay. So okay. how dare you? And believe no, me, if I generally ninety five percent to the women, I do hear you do. Uh, well, unfortunately, right now, that. unfortunately, right now, the contraceptive, a lot of the contraceptive responsibility falls to women. As soon as we have male contraceptives that are that are good, apply the responsibility on the men. And I wonder what he would do with real, like five pretty thirteen year olds, you know. But but I'm wondering about the UAs. Hold on, what yeah. I what I would do with five. Well, I'd clean your van or something, wouldn't you? I nail four of them. I'd tell the fifth to get me no, a beer. your daughters, I mean. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Then, <laughs> sorry, just then. oral. Just what would oral. What you do with five thir beautiful 13-year-old daughters? <laughs> what would I and do with them? You, are you going to be talking the same to the, all these men? That's what I'm saying. Hey, baby, are you loaded? No. Really? I'm 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 a little bit wondering. You're asking about pot, though. What, why? I'm a, I'm asking. Hold on, Drew. Has something else come out of your ass uh, recently? It's just been a never-ending. <laughs> I know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna waste one of my matches. Use one of my lifelines. Do you want to call Christ. someone? Do you want to call your life lifeline? Yeah, I'd like to call my um, <laughs> my councilman. See if I could uh, I could have the studio moved. I just I just. All right, Janice, listen. Here, all right, here, let me let me answer your question so you're okay. not uh, the feeling we didn't answer it. As far as 
adulterating your urine. Uh, people that test urine look for adulterating agents of all types. And if there's evidence of something being done to the urine, adulterated anyway, that is considered positive. One time, at one time, you told somebody uh, that it would take like less than three or four days to get out of their system. If they are just, days. if they smoke just one time and are not a regular chronic smoker, that's for sure the case. Yeah. Hey, okay. Janice, Janice, you got to clean up your ass. Do you hear me? Yes, I do. For for the sake of your kids, fix yes, up I the do. relationship, get straight, do all that positive stuff, find hey, Jesus hey, Christ. Hey, Adam, I don't mean anything personal. I think you do a wonderful. I know I do a wonderful job. Thank you. Okay. Oh my God, that's Mama. That is Mama to two two little six and seven year olds. That's Mama. Oh, is that what she said? She's, She's got two kids. I didn't hear that. Oh, that's Mama right there, nice. making all the important decisions. Well, that life. match is really truly a relief. Yeah. Hey, let me give you guys a key to the match. A lot of people don't know this. I, I learned it from uh, Jimmy breaking wind <laughs> on me all these years. You light the match and immediately put it out. Immediately, and then let the smoke trail. You don't keep the match lit and wave it around. That doesn't do anything. Light it, put it out. I, I know Jimmy is your is your real true love, but do I compare? Yeah. Oh, you're close. Oh, yeah. You just may, close. You may be even getting close to his cousin Sal. Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Jade. Yeah. Okay. So you called about Vicodin uh, twenty minutes ago. Yeah. And you had some follow up question. Yeah. That was rude. You guys just cut me off. What, what, is the, what is the question? I want to know what the five-day detox you were talking about entails. Uh, it entails taking medication that makes it a more comfortable experience. And you, what you kind need, of medication? You need to, I'm not going to go into specifics because okay. it's different in different programs. You can call Los Encinas. You can call Glendale Adventist. And there are people there that specialize in detox. So what, what happens? I call them. Do I have to go somewhere for a month or a week? Or it would be better, best if you went somewhere for at least two, a couple of weeks. Okay. That is not possible. Okay, right. well, right. Then you need to call and talk to them about Do that. Do they have, like, an outpatient type of thing? Not for, not for, op well, I, I know at Las Encinas we won't take opiate addicts for outpatient without okay, some inpatient so that's first. no. Okay. Hey, hey, baby. What? Stop busting our chops. What you do you mean? You what called have we done? The, Because you called this show because you're strung out on Vicodin. We told you what, what you need to do. And you didn't no, you didn't you like those answers, and then what, accused us of blowing you off. No, no, no. Now, now you're angry that we're that you have an addiction specialist explaining to you what you need to do. And he just did, and that's fine. But he's telling me the one place doesn't, and that's fine. So where can I go, or if I get a doctor? Most places will not treat opiate. Opiate addiction takes a long time and usually takes a high degree of structure, inpatient or sober living. Okay, so what are you talking about this five-day detox thing? Can I come see you? Mm. What can I do? Call, call one of these hospitals. That's an inpatient detox. Inpatient. That means I go there after work? Or no, and you go in the hospital and you get detoxed. Jade, you got to call them and, and let them figure out what you need to do, okay? Okay, so I have two places here. Los Encinas just got a big no. What about the Glendale uh, Avenue? Yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me specify again. Oh, my God. In the vast majority of situations, opiate addiction is not an outpatient detox. Okay. Not. Why don't and you're we... looking for an easy way out of this. This is a serious addiction. It's like the, you're doing the equivalent to arguing with someone who wants to put you in a coronary care unit after a heart attack. Because you don't think you need it. No, I need it. All right, then just call the places and get the treatment. I'm, I'm going to hang up because you need to make the calls now. Really? All right, I, just, I can't help it. It's like a bad tooth. Jade, oh. you satisfied with that? Jade? Okay. Well, she, she didn't hang up. It. Good. Oh, what a lovely, lovely individual. I'll, uh, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say that was a Vicodin talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, maybe I'm a prick, but you call the show, you want answers, we give you the answers, and now you got to do it. It's not, it's not open for debate. Maybe, maybe other people have other opinions. Maybe you could talk to somebody who does Maybe, but it's not us. Yeah, here's That's the, our I, opinion. I, I don't do opiate addictions and outpatient because it never works, ever. Well, do you think if Jade uh, came in, you know, a uh, couple hours, uh, three times a week no and way. went back home, it would work for her? No, no way. No. Amber, yeah. yeah, she doesn't have two weeks. Meanwhile, two years goes by. Right. What's which, up, which Amber? Is how that works. You're 15. Oh. What's going on? Okay, last night I heard somebody call. Um, they said when they give their boyfriend a blowjob, it tastes really bad. Mm -hmm. Well, when I give my boyfriend a blowjob, it tastes like clams. <laughs> nice. And it's really gross. Yeah. And I just want to know, like, what would cause it to taste like that? Uh, you blowing the Gordon's fisherman? <laughs> No. No. 
I was just playing a hunch. Uh, clams, I, I would I would imagine that would approximate what that's a that, decent yeah you know, what that would normally taste like. At right? least it it tastes like something. Uh. I mean something that uh, that's edible. But it's like really clammy. I don't like clams. Uh, is this your only experience with this? Yeah, but I've had like my friends and stuff. And they yeah. said it didn't taste like clams. Well, here's the deal. It's, not, it's, I, it's high be, time I give my BJ speech again to all the ladies. <laughs> it's not going to be marshmallows. You do not mm-hmm. have to ingest it. Just use it. your mouth as a receptacle and then spit it somewhere far, far away. Yeah. You can handle that. Yeah. Well, you're 15. Why don't you slow down? There. I've covered myself. Okay. But what I'm saying is is I've, I've uh, taken a swig of bad milk uh, at the fridge door a hundred times. It goes in the mouth. I walk over the sink. I spit in the sink. I rinse my mouth out. I'm good. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All yes. right. You're, you're talking, talking about how you engage in this act. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't okay. have to uh, swallow it and then take a little the, the, from the, the penis the and put mi- it behind your ear. Sour milk is just a euphemism for Jimmy, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. But, uh, Thank you for seeing through. You know, it. just thinking about uh, Jade and my not wanting to talk to her about what the specifics were of how somebody goes through opiate detox. I mean, I, I really just wouldn't. I didn't want to talk to her about it. I, not that I couldn't a- go in through a lot of specifics, but she would argue every single medication and what they do. I, I don't. I, I don't want to discuss it with her. Well, nor would it help her. She needs to just go do it. She was a little hostile, yeah. I think. Oh, <laughs> yes, I am. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to John. John is twenty-one. Last three girlfriends have cheated on him. He wants to know what the problem could be. I bet it's something to do with John. After this. Yep. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew, our guest tonight. Dr. Drew's rectum. Oh, yes. He's got some gas going, and I'm down to two matches. Mm. So, and you know, yeah, they don't make any noise either. So I'm never, kind of plays tricks on your mind. You know, you never know. You just don't know. Or, or you'll know. Uh, yeah, but after the... Um, Fabric in the studio is thoroughly emulsified, saturated, and, and saturated. It's kind of hard to tell. Right, right. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm, so, so, I'm so sorry. Something happening now? Not at the moment. What do you, What do you speculate? You ate some garlic? Yes. For lunch? Yep. Mm-hmm. Could you never do that again? Uh, if God willing. How about you uh, go uh, in the bathroom and make? Uh, Have a nice BM. Won't help. Really? 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 Why not? Because there's no end to the, the what those bacteria produce. But a good duke will sometimes take the wind out of your no. gas sail, right? No, it doesn't. Nope. It does for me. That's why I save it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to shoot my load uh, too early in the day. You know. Really? <laughs> but doesn't it work that way for most people? No, not not when the, the methane is being produced by the bacteria. Once the bacteria get a hold of something and start producing that, that's it. Nice. John? Yeah, hey, how's it going? You're 21. Yeah. Last three girlfriends have cheated on you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, they have. I see. Long-term relationships? Uh, no, a couple months. Mm-hmm. Three, th- about three months. I think the longest was like uh, four. Who do they cheat with? Uh, mostly, uh, people they work with or, uh, I guess people that come across at school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't go to school full time, so I don't see them all that much. You ever cheat on them? No. Mm. How do you find out they've been cheating? Um, sometimes they'll tell me, uh, it's, it's mostly the, uh, the whole, it's not you, it's me thing. Uh-oh. And, uh. I'm not ready to commit, and uh, I don't want to be... No. All right. Well, that, that's not really cheating. That's just them never really being too into the relationship. Uh-huh. Is I there mean, any quality they all had in common? Uh, not really. Uh, I met them all at school. Um, Were they long shots for you? I mean, were these people that... A little over your head? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I thought uh, that's kind of why I approached them, because I thought I had a shot with them, so... Hmm. Well, as uh, we talked about last week... Uh, 19 20 year old girls uh it is uh, it's their world you you just uh, hang on as long as you can yeah yeah that's uh, it's tough it's a it's a tough few years it, the tables begin to slowly turn in your direction at a certain point as the years wear on but uh yeah yeah i don't know why don't you just date around then and just sort of you know beat them at their own game Okay, it was, uh, it's kind of tough because I'm uh, I'm in the military, so I'm not really hmm. around 
all that much. Yeah. Are they maybe concerned about you leaving and not want to get involved because you're I, not going to be? I think that might be it too because I just right, uh, well. I just got orders. So where are you going? Uh, no, I just I just uh, I just moved up to where I am now from Southern California. So. I see. What branch are you in? Air Force. Best branch. Yeah. What do you do? I'm a uh, radio technician. I see. What do you do? The, turn the do, deal with the radio. Yeah, uh, anything that uh, transmits or receives a signal on the airplane is mine. That's going to come in uh, real handy in the outside world. I'll tell you that. Definitely. Yeah. All right, there, buddy. Well, All listen. Right. Let, uh, there, there's no simple answer here. You find yourself a good woman, and and you know what? And everyone's got to do this. Everyone's got to get their radar in. Speaking of uh, radio transmissions, here. I mean, you got to get a vibe off of somebody. Whether they're a good person, right. whether they're an honest person. You know, there's a lot of people that are in relationships and they're like, I don't know, I think they're stepping out, they're cheating, yeah. I don't trust no, them. You need, to, I, you need to begin assessing reality realistically. Let me write See that down. reality. Yeah. All right. It's a learning process, though. He's 21. He's fine. Okay. Mark? Uh, yeah. Hey, Adam Crow. Hey. The funniest guy alive. That's right, right buddy. Listen to the show every night and watch the man show whenever virgin, I can. Virgin. Thank you. You're yeah. virgin? Uh, yes. Yeah. Can yeah, always I hear can. it. What? Yeah, because you're 16 and we have 16 year old guys that call this show and I. Yeah. Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, before I even get into my problem, I gotta say that you must do a lightning round this, uh, this show. Oh, yeah, the lightning round. Yeah, yeah, I will do that. Let me make a note here, Drew. Lightning round? Fine. Lightning round. Come on. All right. Good yeah, time. All right. Yeah. All right, Mark, what's what, up? What'd you call about? Uh, actually, that was it. I don't really want to waste your time. I know you disconnect people who make up their questions. Great. So, uh, goodbye. All right. All right, Mark. Thanks, Take buddy. Care. Good times. Wow. <laughs> he had like a pot boiling or something. Sarah? Yeah. You're 15? Yes, I am. What's up there, Sparky? <laughs> um, okay. Well, like, after sex, or not really after sex, but like, after like things go on down there and stuff um like the lips and the chorus like swell mm -hmm. and they're like big mm -hmm. for like a long time mm -hmm. how long um well today it was like like five hours uh, what is it that's going on down there um just like any like physical contact like a lot of touching or like a lot of sex i mean yeah, what kind of sex a lot a lot of sex? Yeah, like at one time. Is, are you irritating the area? Is it too much? I think so. Okay, why don't you kind of hang back a little bit? It would be, communicate to your partner what it is you actually, what actually makes you happy. Okay. Uh, well, no, no, never thought of that, yeah, huh? Interesting. Fascinating. How old's the guy? 16. And are you having intercourse? Yes. Yeah? Are you using protection? Yes. Yeah? It is, a huge, it is a huge mistake to be so concerned about making him happy. That is a big mistake. Right. You yeah. guys, focus on I me. Don't really worry about these guys. Oh, I know. I, I wasn't really sure what it was, though, so. Well, it's it's an irritation, it sounds like. Okay. Yeah, he's going uh, too too hard for too long. Okay. Yeah, that's your, uh, that's your vagina rejecting the penis. It's saying it needs a break. Okay. All right? Okay, thank you. All right, easy, baby. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Well, she had that squeaky voice. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Is she around, Sarah? Still Sorry. there? No. All right. She's lucky. I could have got to some gambling on Possibly, her. Possibly, yeah. Oh, A little bit too active too soon. My God. Nobody would hold still for me when I was uh, 16. Mm. Are you kidding? Drew, you had a girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. Eric? Yeah. You're 15? Hey, what's up, Spooty? What's up? Um, I was um, asking about Oxycontin well, um, for Drew. Uh, I was just wondering what um, are the effects of it and how addictive is it? It's opiate, heroin. Really? Same stuff. That bad? Same thing. When, you say, same, when you say same thing. Well, I because, mean, because if I say opiate, they go, oh. And if I say uh, it's, it's derived from opium, then nothing. But if right, I say it's the same, same class, essentially the same compound as heroin, oh. Oh my God! Oh yeah, my God! You say Vicodin's an opiate, and the same thing. And I've had thing. Vicodin; it didn't do anything. Heroin might not do anything to you. Oh really? Yeah. You guys? Sorry, yeah. you should try that, Eric. Yeah. So uh, how, how will um, how many times do you think um, will you have to do to get addicted to it? Well, you're you're in, the fact that you asked that question suggests you're an addict. Period. 
I've only done it a couple times. I understand. Actually. I don't think you. I don't mean you're addicted. I mean you're an addict. You have the biology. Yeah, I do have that in my family. My yeah. everyone's an alcoholic or a drug addict. Well, you get off on this one at 15, and uh, it'd be unlikely you get back from this. That is a very serious addiction. All right. Do hey. not f around with this stuff, Eric. Yeah. Understand what you have has to be treated like a medical condition. You can't screw around with it. Mm -hmm. You could. You you can't experiment like the other kids. Yeah. Because you're liable to get going with it in 10 years. It's going to pass in the blink of an eye, and you're going to be strung out. I bet you've already had sort of a pow experience with it, and you yes. just think about it all the time. Yeah. And you do that a couple more times, and your whole life is going to be focused on this. Okay. Right. It's easy, relatively easy now for you not to do it anymore. And six okay. months from now or three months from now, and then for the rest of your life, it could be really difficult. Okay. So why don't you just not do it now? All right. While it's easy. You understand? Mm-hmm. All right. You've heard what happens when these 29-year-old uh, bitches call this show and they're mm -hmm. strung out and they're angry and the, the, the life's a mess. Yeah, she's yeah I, can, I can vouch for that um, Viking and girl. I, yes. I know someone, a girl also, who um, is addicted to Viking. Yeah, she's you, just like that. You get that way at 15 and they, that, that is a difficult, that's almost impossible to come back from because you miss the whole development of adolescence. All yeah. right. We'll be back. Hey, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew, how's your uh, colon? Is it settled in? Mm. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We just, just keep, you should have gone out. You, you know, you should have spent your time doing the last five minutes finding more matches. You should have <laughs> gone on a holy a grail search. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, doing the hyperventilation because if I hyperventilate like one of those. Uh, free divers yeah i think i could hold my breath for like 20 minutes oh good okay yeah no worries <sighs> but during the hyperventilation you might, <laughs> might endure some serious punishment <laughs> drew uh, i was gonna do it down the block ah. all right uh, i drew and i were just uh having a discussion about the gay pride parade that we're involved in uh coming up on the uh 20th of uh may i believe it is and i know uh it just sounds like i don't want to do it but <laughs> <laughs> I really started thinking about specific parades, specific group parades. I, I'm generally against them. Are you against them, Drew? I, I know I'm, you're trying to be fair no, and even-handed now. I'm in now, favor but. of the notion that we don't separate ourselves into small little groups. I mean, people want to celebrate small, small groups. I understand that. Like Families Super Bowl parties? Yeah. Nothing bigger than a Super Bowl party? Yeah. I mean, it just seems too nationalistic to me. Now, where are you on the uh, Mardi Gras Rose Bowl party parades? I'm okay with that. You are? Why? Yeah. Just because those are just events. You know what General I mean? They're, they're spectacles. Yeah, they don't mean anything. They don't mean anything attached to them. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's sort of ironic, though, that w the groups that are having the parades are basically saying that they needed to be included in society, but yet they break off from society and, and march and demonstrate. Now, I know there's a certain amount of that necessary, depending on what society you're living, but we haven't gotten far enough as a society where you can just be gay and go about your business or whatever you are and go about your business. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, remember that white supremacist they called us a couple days ago? Yeah. He, he ruins it for everybody. Well, what about if he has a parade? Do I got to get involved with that? Yeah. Really? I mean, just to be even-handed? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Just all right. Ever. No, not all right. Uh, there yeah, he that's is. That's my man. There he is. All right. Tiffany? Hi. You're 22. Yeah. What's up? Okay. I have a problem. I've been dating this guy for like a couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. And he doesn't like to have intercourse. What's he like? <sighs> Um, he wants me to watch him masturbate. I see. What does that do, what does that do for him? Or have you asked him? I don't know. It arouses him or something. Hmm. No, I didn't ask him. Hmm. And one of his requirements is that he wants to give oral sex three times a week from the back. What is that? From the back? Yeah. We got a porch? His requirements? What is this, some sort of negotiation you go through? Is it, is it serve you some papers? This is what he says. I see. And why, why from, would you... the, from the back on you, right? Yeah. So you you get down in some sort of a kneeling position and he goes backside. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. That's hardcore, by the way. Those are the guys who are all business with their oral sex. 
Hey, I tip of the hat to them. They're better men than I am. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do respect it in my own way. You really, you're not passionate enough. That's the problem. I'm not a passionate yeah. enough man. You're too, too apathetic. Hey, uh, Tiffany? No commitment. Yeah. Why don't you find yourself a nice, normal guy who's not all uh, whacked out sexually? I mean... I, I yeah? He's weird. Yeah, yeah I right. That. I didn't find out until, you know... Well, you, now you recently. found out, and that's part of the dating process. Why not move on? What's up with you? I mean, where's your self-esteem at? What do you mean? Well, um, a lot of 22-year-old women would say, listen, I'm not going to tolerate this. Oh, he just told me. I thought something was wrong with him. Well, and that, yeah. when you think that, why don't you then think to yourself, eh, i got to get out of this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I've been um, avoiding him. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're still not answering the question why you don't just kind of well, have you, have you Have you done this, though? He's done the masturbation while you're around? No. No, he's not done it yet? No. That's just part of his... Uh, we got into talking about sex, and he's telling me, you know, what he likes. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird. That's, <laughs> that's part of his plan. But he didn't lay out specifically in his plan what he needed you to do while he was masturbating. Watch him. That's it. That's it? That's it. Fully clothed? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like an easy gig. What? What's the pay? <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Tiffany. Hmm? You, you, need, uh, you need a nice, normal guy. I know. All right? Why don't you find that guy? Okay. This, ain't, this ain't the guy. All right. All right? Okay. There you go. All right, baby. Good Bye. times, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're worth more than that. You're right. Okay. Okay. Hold your head up. All righty. All right. Well, why don't you let him try one of those backsides on no. you, though? <laughs> huh? No. You don't think so? No. Why not? I was wondering if he was gay or something. I don't know. No. No. It's Something, okay. Something's up. But he's, he's, he's fetishistically inclined. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Listen, fellas. <clears throat> it's bad to lay out the sexual... A battle plan too early in the relationship. Well, it, I, it, listen, <coughs> this may not be the extent of his bizarre demands. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This may have been a small dose for him. Oh, really? You yeah. know what I'm saying? He could have reeled himself in quite a bit. Yeah, I have a feeling. That was my sense of this. It's like he, here, he delivered that off too easily. And here's the thing, though, by the way. If you're going to, if you're dating someone for a couple of weeks and you get into that conversation over a glass of red wine of uh, how it's going to work and what you expect <laughs> and what you're going to do, you do what I do. You lie. You know, you go, oh, baby, you know what you can expect? Trail of rose petals into a nice <laughs> bath. I'm going to wash you. I'm going to scrub you. I'm going to set massage. you up. Foot massage. Cuticle push. Going to give you the uh, little uh, French uh, manicure there. Special little smells, French. special music. Yeah. You'll put uh, all kinds of uh, expensive nonsense salts into the tub. That uh, smell of lilacs. Then I'm going to lie you down on the bed. I'm going to give I, you another I, massage. I should have a question. This time a deep tissue massage. <laughs> right? I'm not done. And I'll pour you some uh, fine imported champagne. We're going to toast white that. truffle. Then I'm going to go down on you for about an hour. I'm going to get up. I'm going to roll my neck around. I'm going down for another hour. Meanwhile, you're going to watch Alan McBeal and drink <laughs> champagne. <laughs> Sex in the City and Alan McBeal. All and right. Eddie and ms then we'll do it in the uh, missionary style for 8.6 minutes. Then I roll you over to Doggy, and I finish you off with more oral. What do you say? Well, I have a question. Then I bathe you again. I have a question. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. what uh, where do guys get energy for that kind of thing? You know, guys that do the stuff that women really, really like? Where yeah. Do they, where do they find that through line motivation? I mean, like the rose petals and stuff? I mean, there are guys that can t to get the music right, get the sense right and stuff. Where does that come from? Or is that only gay guys that do that? On on women or other well, gay but, guys? But they they could be gay and just... You mean they're anything? very, very much in touch with that? Yeah. You, you know what? Where does <clears> it come from? I, 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 I try to do that kind of thing. I, I just It just it doesn't spontaneously come from me. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. I know it's what like, you mean. Like, I, I, someone would have to write the script out for me and I have to follow it. It'd be like step following some sort of recipe. Right. Right. I, I know what it's like. It's like uh, on Tuesday, you're like, this is the weekend we go horseback riding. <laughs> <laughs> then Thursday rolls around. It's like, scratch your horseback ride. What we're going to do is we're going to rent a nice movie. I'm going to make a nice uh, gourmet meal. And we're going to stay in and really have a romantic evening. Friday night. Then yeah. you get to Friday and it's like, uh, hey, could you pick up a sack of Funyuns and a Sixer on your way over? I'll be napping when you get home. <laughs> Don't wake me. Just give me a hand job. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I tend to think these are guys that aren't busy enough. Oh, these, they got, if you were desperate enough, I guess you'd, you'd motivate, right? 
desperation is but his even, motivation. But, 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 yes. but even then, where does it come from? You, you know, where, where does the instinct to deliver those goods? There's a lot of guys. And okay, here's what it is: women are very much into pleasing men. Uh, we talk to them all the time. Yeah, yeah, too much. Right? Yeah, a little too much. Not for me, but for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much, too much for, right? their, for their health. Right. Guys aren't normally that into pleasing women. They're into doing what they have to do to try to get in their pants, and sometimes that's pleasing, but it wears off pretty quick. Well, the, the, but there are a handful of guys who really get off on the woman's pleasure. Yeah, but those, those guys... Those are those guys. No, no, no. Those no? guys want to see an orgasm. That's yeah. what they want to see. The guys that really get off on creating the whole scene, to me... I'm like, what's uh, what? What they're manipulating? What, what the sociopath? What are they up to? Yeah, to me, it's like where? Oh, th- that's somebody. That's oh, somebody manipulating. I hate this. You know, I get halfway in the story, I want to kick the guy in the nuts. I we packed a picnic basket, and there's this place, great place. Where I, I immediately, I don't, I don't, I don't, immediately, I don't trust those guys. I'm thinking, no, oh, they're up to something. They're so, up to something. As soon as they start bringing up the uh, hot air ballooning. Uh, that's when I go. That I, and I know women love the picnics. They love the hot air balloons and the horses and the whole thing. As long as they think it was painful for you. But forget that. Why can't we even like light a candle? And I can't put, do it. put on turn on some music. I, I, <laughs> what, why can't, what? What is that? We know that's what women like. Why can't what, it? Doesn't even occur to us. Is that because when your your game face is on, you just can't? That stuff just goes away. I it's, don't. It's like, it's like trying to pay attention to a, a, a hangnail when you're in the middle of a football game. I, you know what I, mean? I just think we're bad people. Yeah, that could be it. That could be it. Yeah. Well, well, back to the point. <sighs> no, it's an inter- that's an interesting discussion, guys. <laughs> hey, Drew, yeah. when you have to yell at people that it's interesting? Yeah, it may not be. Well, maybe not to them. L- Laura? Yes. You're 30? Yes. What's up? Hi, I just want to say thanks for taking my call. And I've been listening to you guys for like 10 years. You're so funny and sexy. I love listening to you guys. Good times. What's up? Anyways, um, I went to the doctor today for um, some birth control pills. And the nurse said that it's not a good idea to leave out the placebo. That I should take them every third month. Every third month? Yeah. So she's going to let you do it two out of the three months. Right. Why do you want to do it at all? Well, that's what I'm saying. The sugar pills? Right. Wait, why is she saying it's a bad idea? Just because you'll forget? No, she's saying that you should menstruate every th- three months because it's not healthy to go without. Well, why, why don't you menstruate every month? Why, why are you doing this at all? Well, um, I don't know. Because I heard and you know heard Dr. Drew talk about it, and I've, heard, I've read it in magazines, and I okayed it with my gynecologist, and she said it was okay to just it, not- It's okay. I, again, I'm, I'm not wholeheartedly endorsing this. I... If you want to have a wedding coming up or a special vacation and you want to skip your period, just go ahead and don't take the pills. But And there are gynecologists out there that believe that you could stay continuously on the pill without menstruating at all and it would be of no harm. Uh-huh. I'm uncomfortable with that recommendation. I think I think what the nurse told you is a reasonable one to maybe every third month go ahead and menstruate. Oh, uh, okay. But I, personally, if you're, if you're asking me my opinion, I think you ought to take it the old-fashioned way because it's, it's been working for a long time that way. Go ahead and skip it a week a month and <laughs> menstruate. Right. And um, another thing is I, I've been starting to get these migraines. So I asked her if um, I could be on another type of pill, and she suggested low estrogen. Absolutely. You want to get all, as, as low estrogen, if all, not off estrogen entirely. Why? And, and, Why does that, that give what, you a headache? That's what triggers migraine. And, and if, in fact, migraine is one of the sort of significant, um, what we call contraindication or relative contraindications to taking the birth control pill. Oh, Zach? You can actually do stroke okay. sometimes. Good times. Zach, you're 16. What's up? Hey, what's up, Adam? Um, this question is pretty much for Dr. Drew. Um, today, my friend, um, a buddy of mine came over, and we were smoking uh, a couple bowls of weed. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened was um, he told me that if, uh, that if you passed out, it makes it a lot cooler. So uh, so what we did was um, he told me to, like, lean forward and, like, take huge breaths. Yeah, and he grabbed you from behind? No. <laughs> No, afraid not. Anyway, but uh, no, no, that's what we used to do. We weren't talking about anal rape. We we're talking about the hyperventilation. Yeah, and then, then they then they hugs you sort of from behind. It cuts. No, 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 no nothing like that. Anyway, so I just told I got lightheaded, and he told me to look at my watch and just count the seconds. And then when I was really lightheaded, and this was actually I was kind of standing up. And so what he'd do is then he'd uh, then he'd say just hold your breath and stand all the way up, and then he just like grab my neck a tiny bit, not like put a lot of pressure on it. And then I just like fall down on the couch, and like I wake up. It seemed like it seemed like ten minutes, but it'd only be like three seconds. Right, and your ass hurt. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Actually, I recorded it, so I know he wasn't doing anything dishonorable. 
Anyway, but, yeah, mm-hmm. and he just, I mean, I had a headache later, so, I mean, I, my common sense tells me that can't be, you know, a good thing. No, it's not body. a good thing. Not a good so thing. So, I'm just, I mean, a lot of my buddies say, like, oh, yeah, well, it's only, like, you know, it's only cutting your auction off for 30 seconds, but, I mean, it, you know, I'm just wondering how, how bad it exactly is. Cause if it's well, we don't bad, know. There's no way to measure how bad it is. Obviously, you're, you're depleting the the critical supply of yeah, auction. They're like, very like delicate cells in the uh, system. However... Couldn't he just drive his dad's car into an icy lake? Sure. Just do that. Or just, you know, a whole telephone pole. But oh, yeah. the... the uh, but I mean, just like, like for 30 seconds, if it's cut off, I'm like... Well, the that problem that is that, that your body sometimes doesn't know that you're aiming for just 30 seconds. Yeah. And you can slow your heart rate down to the point that it can even stop. Well, you can, it started being a lot faster, actually. What's that? Hey, my, my heart rate didn't slow down and sped up a lot. Because I got, like, because, like, dude, when I woke up, I'm like, whoa, I didn't know what the hell happened. Yeah, it sped so, up yeah. It, yeah, a- yeah. after it had slowed down to the point okay. that it shut the... Uh, plus, the, again, this business of cut, pushing in your carotids can cause stroke. So you, you yeah, don't like, know what you're doing. Like, I mean, like, if I did, like, you know, maybe every, like, maybe once a week or something like that, what it, chances are would it, like, come back to give me later? Or, I mean, like... No, ch- let, let me... Let me <laughs> Uh, I'd like to see more like a point seven times a week, maybe let, three times. Let, let's a month. Let's put it this way: there's a re, there's a possibility that you could die each time you do this. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. All there right. That's, I appreciate that. There you go. And Adam, I think the match is really cool to see. Thanks, Abe, hey, Zach. Yeah. I mean, you're 16, man. Can't All you right. uh, just whack off and like play uh, softball or something? Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do, man? Yeah. Easy, buddy. I live in Baffle, man. Where? There's nothing to do in Bothell, but it's a suburb of Seattle. Just, yeah. All right. Well, it's, it's no good. Uh, uh, okay, but you, really with Everybody the height, you're, there, you're, you're getting too high, too young, too fast. Oh, I know. No, I mean, like, a lot of my friends are, like, into the opiates and, like, you know. Whoa, the, my God. They're taking crap like that. No, not not heroin, like, stuff, but I mean, like. Yeah, opiates are all, listen, there's not I mean, a. I know, I know, I know, I know it's not a difference. They all come yeah, not a big difference amongst the opiates. And I'm, tonight we've had several calls, young people on opiates. I'm, I'm a little surprised. I mean, I'm, I see tons of opiate addiction, but it's usually in older folks. Listen, everybody, I don't want to get too preachy, but here goes. I got a certain amount of friends who, you know, did drugs and uh, did uh, drank a lot of booze and had a lot of problems. And basically, here's how it is. They all started getting high and getting effed up around 15 or 16. Oh, did that what started? Yeah, maybe 14, 15, 16, right. and around there. Right. You know, and it was fun, and it was kicks, and it was kind of moderate, and it was a weekend thing and stuff like that. And by, uh, by 18, 19, 20, they, they had a pretty good, pretty good run going. And they were getting high a little more often and missing a little more work and screwing up a little more and getting in a few more car crashes and getting a few 502s and getting arrested and the whole thing. And by the time they got into their mid to late 20s, they all had to basically go get their life back in order because uh, the last 10 12 15 years had just been a just sort of blur of booze weed and drugs and uh it's not a great plan it really isn't i'm not saying uh having a hit of weed's going to kill you but a lot of you are making a career out of this pretty young and it's just it's it's not a great plan all right there drill I'm with you. Thank you, buddy. Brett? Uh, why if I say that kind yeah. of stuff, I, I sound like... You're the man. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're so busy farting. Who has time to talk? <laughs> That's true. It's, it's pretty time-consuming. Um, this, this question is basically for Drew, I think. But um, my sister introduces me to one of her friends, like maybe a couple months ago. And she's kind of hot, you know, so I started kicking it with her. And then me, me and her have sex. And then she has a boyfriend at the time. So I'm thinking, okay, this is like a get-out-of-jail-free car where it's like, all right for me to just not even worry about it after and then she starts calling me off the hook like like crazy like she gets sick of psychotic about it she breaks up with her boyfriend and starts calling me mm-hmm. and then i try to like cool things down between me and her and like start to like pull away from her and then she calls me and she's like i have a stomach ache i'm like well go to the doctor she's like okay so she goes to the doctor and then she calls me later on that day and she's like guess what i'm pregnant I'm like, but you are on birth control. She's like, well, the doctor gave me an ultrasound. I'm thinking, you can't get an ultrasound just stopping in the doctor's office. Yeah, a gynecologist, you can. Just that same day? No, just for a stomach ache? If it was a gynecologist, yes. Okay, okay, well. And then, and then she tells me... Hold on, Drew, is something coming out of you? A while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This may be time to... It's time to use my, use second, my second match. It's getting kind of scary with those men. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared for you. All right, well, then, like, she tells me, okay, well, I have enough... You really look like you're some sort of, like, warlock. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to wave it around. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, then she tells me, I set up an abortion. She's like, I don't want you to have nothing to do with it. Don't worry about it. I set up an abortion in a month. I'm like, okay, she's telling me this while she's at my house. She came to my house to tell me. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go down to the uh, to the store. I want to get a soda. I buy a pregnancy test, and I tell her to take it. And it comes out negative. And yeah. this is like a month and a half after she said, after we had sex. Well, that's interesting. So I'm like, okay. Now I really don't believe you. I'm like, well, why don't you take me with you to your abortion so I make sure you, you're really having an abortion? She's like, well, I don't want you to have nothing to do with it. I'm like, well, I want to make sure you're not lying to me because if you're lying to me, I don't ever want to talk to you again. Right. And if you're telling me the truth, then you know what? Everything's cool, and I'm very sorry for even accusing you. And then she's like, okay, okay, no problem. And then she calls me the next day. She's like, oh, they moved the abortion up to today. Okay. And then she calls me later on the day. She's like, oh, I had the abortion. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Oh. So, you know, I just want some justification. Am I tripping, or does that sound fishy? It sounds fishy. Okay. Yeah, it sounds fishy. Like, but I mean, how about her, I mean... What's her past? Like? Yeah. How is she as a human? Can you uh, get a read off know. her? My sister said she was cool, but she's kind of like, she gets clingy, and she doesn't want to, like, let go of guys. Mm -hmm. Like, if she, if she likes a guy, she, like, tries to do whatever she can to keep him. So my yeah. sister was fishy about it, too. My sister's like, I think she's lying, too, and she's her good friend, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this may not be the one for you, Brad. Yeah, I guess Well, the so. good news is is she's not pregnant, right. if, if she ever was. If she ever was. And you're kind of on to her. Yeah. So that's it. All right, well, I just wanted to make sure that I was like, I, I don't know, because I feel, I, I'll feel really bad if she really was pregnant, you know? No, I understand. That sounds fishy. Yeah, okay. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> Thank you. All right, yeah. but listen, don't, uh, don't get drunk and have some sort of maintenance call where you do actually get her pregnant. Yeah, that really <laughs> And, and don't keep, don't string her along. Yeah, I won't do that. If you're done, you're done. It's, right. It's, it's more than done. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, there, buddy. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I had a heart of gold, this guy. Yeah, he's all right. It's okay. I like that. Yeah. No, I like when he said, uh, you know, if if uh, if you're not pregnant, it's a, it's a big deal. I don't like you lying. And if you are, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, I, I apologize. I like What's that. What's interesting, though, Very even handed that If friend. she were really screwy, she would not have taken that very well. That whole, that whole, she would have got escalated in response to that, you know? Yeah. There's a more fart. Is something else coming out of you? It's, it's, a, it's it just never ends? Really? Mm. You like a very badly scented candle? <laughs> the, the world's worst scented candle? <laughs> it's ode anus. It just never goes out? Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, you, yeah. You, you, yeah, there's something going on. You can yeah, take I, a gotta, break. I gotta go in the yeah. other room and induce some vomiting. <laughs> All right? We'll take a break, and then we'll be back. Hi, this is Shaggy. Mm, Mr. Lover, Lover, up front and personal, and you're listening to Love Line uh, with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Got it going on up close and personal. Uh, yeah. Huh? What? More? Up close and personal. What? No, I'm... Uh, the okay. ass... The uh, ass assault has not stopped. You know what? I, I'm if not... anything, it's gotten worse. It's just cumulative here. Is that what it is? Yeah. What, what has been compressed within my colon is now filling this room. Filling not only the room, but me. <laughs> Everything in the room has been filled with what was in your colon. Yeah. It's a transference of colon matter. Yeah, yeah. From and here's basically the pipeline. Um, this studio, it goes from inside of your colon yeah. into the studio, and then I ingest it, and then one day I'll pass it on to my children, <laughs> God willing. It gets incorporated into the genetic material, doesn't it? I'm really, I'm scared. I'm going to uh, belch on the ride home and stink up the car with your gas. Is that is that a possibility? Uh, you know uh, the way things are going. I'm I'm at a, I'm at a serious saturation level with this gas now, Drew. I, that, can, I can't take up anymore. They want to hear the boogie out there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we play All right. One? There's uh, been a uh, request for the uh, Dr. Drew boogie, one uh, we haven't heard in quite some time. So uh, let's do that. Ow! Get down, get down. Asshole. Get down, get down. Get down, get down. You're fat. Get down, get down. I find you have sex with me. Gee, it hurts. Have sex with me. Faggot better have sex with me. I want to have sex with me. I was born, so I had anal sex. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. Tried to be straight, or I thought I should be straight, and I was confused. I mean. You know, pee on this makes me sick. It hurts when I urinate. It makes me sick. Anal sex makes me sick. This guy's penis 
makes me sick. I've had anal sex, but felt no effect. I've got these lesions. Gee, it hurts. Still a burden. Makes me sick. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? Ow! You're fat. You're gay. Ow! Fused. You're sick. Ow! You're overweight. You're still a virgin. Ow! You're dysfunctional. Not acceptable. Dr. Drew's right, 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 right. Oh, right, he's, right, uh, right, right. I don't know if he's right as much as he is ripe. <laughs> It's uh, maybe a little bit each tonight. Mm. All right. Well, I used my last matchup. I, I know. I got scared when you, when you did that. <clears throat> a feeble. Uh, you know what that's like? It's like me being uh, cast adrift in a sea in a dinghy and uh, eating all of my rations of food the first day. Yeah. Just hoping I'll be rescued yeah. by, by nightfall. What was the wisdom in that? I don't know. I, it was a plan and I went with it. Maybe not, a, maybe not a very good plan. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to speak to uh, Charlie over here, who's okay. uh, calling from Cincinnati. He's 20. Charlie? Hi. How are you doing? Uh, doing all right. How are you? Well, I've had better days, too. Oh, yeah. Well, um, but my my question was, I just wanted to get some feedback from you guys. I don't know if you've heard what's going on down here in Cincinnati uh, uh, with the rioting. Yeah. Go- um, yeah. And my feelings are... These, the black community, um, they genuinely have a right to get upset when, you know, people are getting shot and this, that, and the other. But, I mean, come on. White people get it just as bad. I mean, I'm 20 years old. I'm a known drug offender in the city. When they pull my record up on their computers, it says approach with caution. I've had the police pull a gun on me several times. Yeah. I mean, I'm a good kid. I'm from a really nice neighborhood. I used to smoke a lot of pot, and they labeled me for that. And this guy that they that this cop shot, I mean, he was escaping 14 warrants for his arrest. He runs into an alley, reaches in his coat. Yeah. I mean, what do you, if, if, if a cop says freeze, what are you going to do? Well, I, I would tend to freeze. Yeah, exactly. I like to play it safe and freeze even before they say freeze. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Same, same the uh, I mean, time of saying a freeze. I would do the same. And <laughs> Well, listen. Listen, here's how it is. Uh, yes, uh, traditionally, the cops have been uh, unfair to the blacks. Uh, no doubt about that. I think uh, things are evening out a little bit uh, nowadays. I know it's not real popular to talk about that. Also, uh, is Well, it's mostly because the different races are entering the ranks of the police, too. Well, you that's true. I mean, I mean, at least if you're out here in L.A., there's more black and Hispanic. I see more black and Hispanic cops than I do white cops. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't so them, them has become us. Well, yeah. So I, if if it's like who are they being prejudiced against? Their own? Or I'm not sure exactly how that math bodes mm-hmm. out. I, I usually think it's uh, much ado about nothing. But I can tell you as a poor guy. Uh, poor people are the ones who get screwed the most by the cops. They get pulled over. They drive crappy cars. Their stuff isn't in order. They don't have insurance. They have expired tabs. They look. They dress poorly. They're, you know, I mean, it's like you see a car going down the street and it's a uh, shiny new car. You might be more stressed and irritable and do things erratic because of that. What? Who, me? Poor. Even poor? Mm -hmm. All I know is I used to get pulled over all the time when I drove clunker cars and look like an idiot. And uh, now I don't get pulled over as much. I drive nice cars and I wear... Well, I still look like an idiot, actually. Yes, and uh, the blacks riding is a, is a bad plan. But what are you going to do? You know, I mean, they're not going to solve anything. And uh, I agree. It doesn't, it doesn't help. It exacerbates things. But uh, they feel that there's injustice perpetrated. I, I also... There's something going on in Cincinnati. I was there a couple weeks ago, and there is a lot of pent-up energy. There's some oh, yeah. there's something going on in that town, and this just sort of triggered it. Yeah, and it, what's what's it like over there? Uh, bricks through windows about a mile from my house. Uh, they've been setting houses on fire. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Madera area. You said you were in Cincinnati. You know what? I sat. I there's that mall. What the hell's the name of that mall? Is a mall Inwood? off Cincinnati Mall no, by the Omni Hotel. There's a little mall off there in the downtown, and I sat in that mall, and there's a food court, and I thought that I thought. My God, everyone in this regard is so angry. I'm afraid someone's going to pull a gun out. No, you did not. I, Adam, I said, I, I left. It, you just feel it. You could feel the, uh, there's just an energy in that town right now. Yeah, two nights ago, like right when this first started, um, a guy that I used to live with 
he was downtown. Uh, he was more in like the Madisonville area, which is a large black community. And uh, like four or five guys yanked him and another one of my friends out of their car and pistol whipped my friend Jimmy, um, fractured his skull. Um, he's like partially blind in one eye well, now. I, again, I, I think you ought to not look so much at the single event and just try to figure out what's going on in Cincinnati right now and make everybody so angry. There's something, something else going on. This is just This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. All right. Well, you could move down to L.A. <laughs> yeah, be like uh, Reginald Denny. Yeah, really. Uh, I don't know. Listen, you know, I, I'm I'm telling you, I, uh, I I really, you know, I know as a uh, white male, I'm not supposed to say anything, but I've just had an ass full of everyone. Yeah. I've had an ass full of Hispanics, the blacks, the gays, everyone but me. White I people really have an ass full, too, I'm I've sure. I've had an ass full of these uh, goddamn clan guys who are screwing it up for the rest of the uh, passive white folk like myself. The supremacists, I've had an ass full of them. I had, uh, the Jews, eh, eh, eh they're pain in the ass, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, really, I've had an ass full of everyone but the Asians. Well, Chinese now. Uh, yeah, but not, not American the American Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, okay. There's something about the uh, American Asians. They just kind of uh, g go about their business. I've, I've really had an ass full of everyone. I don't know what the answer is. I, I, I think I do know what the answer is. Everyone get to work. I, I swear to Christ, here's the deal, everybody. Cop pulls you over. Yes, sir. No, sir. Put your hands on the wheel. Uh, yeah, they'll, they still could pull you out of the car and beat you. But you know what? I don't think they're going to. I really don't. When a cop tells you freeze, you freeze. When a cop tells you get on the ground, get on the ground. Yes, officer. No, officer. That's it. Out of the car, out of the car. Whatever it is. And, yeah, do they uh, hassle the blacks or the Hispanics or the whoever a little more? I'd probably say, yeah. But you know what? Here's the deal, everyone. 80-year-old uh, women who drive Cadillacs don't get pulled over as often as 19-year-old white guys. That's... Uh, a form of profiling but uh, 80 year old women don't cause as much trouble as 19 year old white guys do people who drive nicer cars don't get pulled over people who drive in nicer areas don't get pulled over as much there's all the cops do this all the time and and uh if if you're black or if you're hispanic or if you're whatever you may fall down lower than the everyone falls under the 80 year old white woman mm. do you know what i'm saying yeah I mean, don't wouldn't you ex wouldn't you expect that women, for instance, elderly women, get pulled over less than teenage boys? Yes. Okay. Does it matter what color the teenage boys are? No. Do black teenage boys get pulled over more than white teenage boys? Yeah, definitely. But the white guys get pulled less than the elderly women. I don't know, and the elderly men. I don't know what the answer is. Keep your hands on the wheel, yes sir, no sir, and uh, let's all just go home and masturbate. That's what I'm saying. Should we go to work first? Oh, I mean, go to work, yeah. then go home and masturbate. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I know you don't like, uh, a lot of you out there don't like the cops. You don't look at them as uh, your friend or they're doing a job or whatever it is, but you know what? Just kiss their ass. Just get through it. Look at it like customs. They yell, halt, halt. That's it. All right. Tom? Yes, hi. You're 33. Yes, I am. Yeah. Now, meter maids, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I want civil disobedience for them. What's going on there, Tom? Are you there, sir? Yep. A friend of mine, Dan, was having sex with his girlfriend. They don't use condoms. They've both been tested uh, years ago. I mean, they've been together for many years. First of all, you guys are both doing a great service to... The youth of America. What's the question, Tom? We Thank appreciate you. that. He broke his penis. Uh, apparently, his urethra, he was having sex with his girlfriend, doing it from behind, pulled out to have an orgasm, slammed into her butt cheek, and immediately following, he started spewing blood out of his penis. Uh-huh. This is so, your friend? No, no. In this case, it really is. I heard the story last night with the guy with the broken condom. Yeah, I know. Really, huh? yeah, it's, it's Did really you have to use the guy's name before um, you set up the story, though? Should I use the guy's name? I'm, you, I'm, you know, confused. You know, I'm confused. His friend Dan. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Broke his penis, friend. right? Yeah, he broke his penis. All right. He needs and, to go and, see a doctor. He, no, he's already been through all that. He saw the doctor, and now it's about two months later. He's all healed up. Supposedly, he still can attain erection. However, he's afraid to have sex now because he thinks that it might not have healed properly and he can still break it rather easily. 
So I think it's more of a mental thing. I happen to talk. I haven't talked to him in about three weeks. I just I've all too. So you know, has a penis. Did he have an operation for to repair? No, he did. He didn't need any operation. He had a catheter in for about seven days, mm -hmm. and he went to the emergency room that night. And then about two days later, it started bleeding again because he got an erection while he was sleeping, and he woke up covered with blood. Hmm. So Dude, I, wonder, I wonder if he just sort of tore his urethra more than broke that, the. Yeah, that's what they were thinking. I mean, usually, usually it's the uh, the corpus cavernosum, and the cavernous body inside that tears and then swells. Yeah, and that sometimes needs an operation to repair, and that's usually from bending the penis, you know, sort of rapidly. Do, do they have a splint or a brace or something Not, this guy you know, could wear? No, Is there any kind so. of penis rehab? There's probably a rehab program, but this sounds like something inside the urethra just kind of tore, and that's you know that just takes a while to heal. All right, so what do you say? Take it slow. He's, he shouldn't have any problem having sex again. Just True. There's something else came out of here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We're going to take a break. Oh. I could give a rat's ass about this guy's penis. I got to think about my own health. All right. I'm going out of the car. I'm looking for matches. All right. All right we'll be back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right there, kids. It's lightning round. I'm Ace Rock Olds. We're going to find another uh, down in room. I'm done lightning round. A little wobble is back in the air. Right? We're going to take some calls. We're going to your calls. We're having a line. It's a love line. Ace, thanks for those matches. Man. Yeah, I got myself some matches in here, boy. Ace Rock Olds. been lightning matches. It's been on Tuesday. We're going to tell you what. <laughs> But I am experienced this since Nam. I really am. Let's hop on the phones there. Amy, 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 Whatever. Uh huh. How about no. yourself? Yeah. Never. Uh, no. <laughs> little, uh, do a little diddle in yourself, uh, baby. Huh? Come on. You can tell no. Ace. Huh? I've, no, no, I've never masturbated. Uh huh. No vibrator? Nope. How about you get yourself a little vibrator and see what happens there, baby? I just, I don't turn myself on. Uh huh. You don't do it for yourself? No. <laughs> yeah. I love myself. Ace Rock Gold loves himself. Ace Rock Gold. Yeah. But how about maybe figuring out how things work on your own, and so you can communicate mm -hmm. that to your partner? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy? yeah. 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 About, does he go down on you? Yes, he does. He does. He do the backside maneuver I learned about tonight. <laughs> oh no, no, that's not his cup of tea. I don't blame him. You know what I mean? You go backside, nobody knows his bottom side. You know what I'm saying, there, girl? <laughs> oh, Drew, that'd be a certain death if I did that on you tonight. I'll tell you what. <laughs> It would be faster than cyanide tablets. Really would there, but Hi, baby. Let's have the same with a little line. A little going down on you. Just relax. We have a couple of wine coolers. How about that? A little glass of Chardonnay. Relax. You uptight, baby? You religious? Um, I was raised religious, but I'm not now. Mm-hmm. Hmm. How about you find yourself, baby? Get in the tub. A little run water right over the coochie roo there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was Ann's technique. Yeah, was. Well, I remain. Something about earlier today? Yeah. Hey, Amy? Yes? Get in that tub. Run that warm water on the vagina. Hey, Amy, give it a orgasm, huh? Well, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, give it a whirl there, baby. Call us back <sighs> later. Yeah, there we go. All right, there, baby. Who's calling you? Right, let's fire for the stock on the phones here. Let me just read a cowbell thing. Let's take another call here. You ready to go, uh, Drewski? Oh, go. Hey, it's the love line, Mace Rock. Oh, it's a good part over there, Dr. Drew Schmick. They have in the middle of the lightning round. Slow as 13 minutes of radio. What's going on there, Shay? Hello. J29, you said hi. Oh, thank you kindly. <laughs> what aren't you wearing? <laughs> What's going on, Jay? Woo! Um, I've been married for two years. Uh -huh. And um, I'm not interested in having sex with my husband. No, hold on a second, babe. Let me check the time. I forgot about the time. It's 1147 and 30 seconds. That's 12 minutes and 30 seconds away from the witch an hour. 12 minutes. Make that in the middle of the line around past 39 minutes of radio. Well, I mean, it's right. Good bye over there, Dr. Drew. He's hot, hot, hot. Not interested in sex with the uh, hubby, huh? Well, I just, it's very hard for me to get interested. Has that always been that way? Yes, it uh, has. Uh -huh. You like him okay? I love him to death. He's my best friend in the whole world. Are you on medication? No. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Birth control pills? No, I'm not on birth control mm. pills. Yeah, it says here on the screen you're thinking about a little threesome, a little try some, do I spice up the relationship, all right? Well, we've talked about it because. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. We're very open. It's never, mm-hmm. you know, I've never had any secrets with him at all, uh-huh. especially about sex. Uh-huh. And I let him know that, you know, it's, mm-hmm. he just, uh-huh. I, I try to say it nicely, but he just doesn't turn me on a lot. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. Why? Well, that's a good dance. Do, just, um, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> do any men? Say that again? Do any men? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I was but very sexually active before uh, he and I met. That's got to be lovely news, yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, it, um, well, he was a virgin when we met. No. And uh, that, like I said, that was about five years ago. No, this poor yeah. son of a bitch who killed himself. Shay, you uh, yeah. thinking about a lady, are you? Well, yeah. You might get a lady in there, maybe a little lesbo. Let me join the pink team there, baby. Let say that. Well, I've been with women before uh-huh. I met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Shay, so. what is up? What, what is up with What's you? with the confusion? What right, is baby? up with you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're sexually compulsive, and then you, you love my husband, but I'm shut down with him. Hold on a second. Let me check the time. It's 11.49 in 10 seconds. That is 10 minutes and 50 seconds away from the top of the hour. 12 midnight. The winch and I'm Ace Rock Holmes. Good to find another doctor. Smack down the middle line around. Fastest 12 minutes around. What's that, Shay? Lesbian? That's the kind of thing that people get into when they've been sort of chronically traumatized when they're a kid. When they just, they can't be close to someone, the person they are close to. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> like, yeah, man, what's going on there, man? Go ahead. Hey, Shay, you got, you got kids? No. No, uh, good. I mean, the fact that you'd even think about having a threesome as a way of improving your intimacy is bizarre. All right, let's recap. This guy's virgin never got himself a little taste of the uh, tale before uh, Shay. She's thinking about chick. She ain't turned on him. He's her best friend. Give it a break now, baby. I'm saying maybe I'll break it up. I mean, you ain't into this guy. You ain't into chick. You're into chick. No, she's not a chick. She's into Don't you lie to his rock all he knows. She's a sexual compulsive. Sexual compulsive. That's what I was saying. Let's hop on the phones now. What should she do, Drew? What are you going to do with her? I, I think maybe a marriage counselor. Marriage right? counselor is what I'm saying. Dan? Yeah. Dan, you're 20. Yeah, I'm 20. Hey, what's going on there, partner? I'm Ace Rock Ola's little partner. I'm here Dr. Drew. What did you say? Yeah, dude, you just said something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got, like, uh, yeah. this friend. Uh-huh. He's, like, mm-hmm. one of my two roommates. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah. he mm. says he masturbates, like, mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, good times. Yeah. Are you, are you living with Adam? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. What's your problem with it there, Danny? Well, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, if he has sex all the time, yeah. he masturbates all the time. Yeah. You know, and the rest of the time we just sit around, you know, lighting flagellants around here. Nice. You know, Sounds like um, an average 20-year-old male existence. Party with you, Dan. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah, all right. But, so uh, what's your question? But, uh, <laughs> you know, is that is that healthy? You know, and sometimes he asks me, you know, if if uh, you know, if I do, you know, and yeah. mm-hmm. I've uh, you know, I'm one of those guys. that's like, yeah, he's one of those dicks. That's right. I don't know. I don't need a guy's masturbatory philosophy. Do you need that? I'm the kind of guy who likes my semen uh, lukewarm, not chilled, not hot. <laughs> Did we really need to hear from Danny? He likes the deodorant that's 110%. That's right. Listen, you're 20, your roommate jacks off all the time. You whack off the other half of the time. Good time. <laughs> Let me check the time. Speaking of the time, it's 11.51 and 40 seconds. That's 8 minutes and 20 seconds away from the top of the hour. The windy hour straight up. Midnight, I'm Ace Rock Cole. This is a good barn over there, Dr. Drew. He's hot, 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 oh. and gassy, gassy, gassy. <laughs> Let's hot back to the phone so we can burn through a few more calls. Minnie. Hello. Ace Rock Cole here. Hi, this what? question's really kind of for Dr. Drew. I think uh-huh. I lost you at this uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> What aren't you wearing? <laughs> Seriously, go ahead. What's okay, What's I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I smoke pot pretty regularly for about 12 years. You smoke the weed. Um, <laughs> like all day, every day. Uh-huh. And then um, my husband and I started having kids, and I stopped. Uh-huh. Good and like now maybe once every three months. No. I'm smoking, but I have, Mm -hmm. even when I was smoking regularly, kind of a different reaction to pot. It makes me very focused. Uh That's right. And I get a lot done. Yeah, me too. I watched watched 15 episodes of Dukes of Hazzard just the other day. I really tuned in. It's like I had blinders on. (laughs) 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 It can make you euphoric, just like alcohol will, too, when you usually have that kind of vibe. I I would go to work. I, you know. Yeah, but it's like the difference between between how an alcoholic reacts to alcohol versus a non-alcoholic. An alcoholic will want to go repave the 
front driveway uh -huh. when, when they're using and they're yeah, not good, alcohol. Good man of point, Andrew. Yeah, that's a good example. Hey, uh, make sure you're still away from the weed now. She's uh, she got the kitties now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then why, why she's being stimulated from it, per se. Mm -hmm. it, can cause, it can trigger panic attacks uh -huh. and things like that, too. Uh -huh. so. uh -huh. yeah, let's check the time real fast. What do you say there, Drew? Sure. Yeah, okay. It's 11.53 and 30 seconds. That's six minutes and 30 seconds away from the top of the hour straight up. I'm H. Rock Gold's Witch and Hour Midnight. And that's my good old partner on there, Dr. Drew. And he is hot, gassy, 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 gassy. Hot, hot, hot. All right, what do you say to Drew? Take a little break. Sounds good. And come back with the fastest 30 seconds rapping on the radio. Beautiful. I'm H. Rock Gold's Well, there you go. We made it through a ass-filled two hours with Dr. Drew, everyone who I'm hoping will be stripped of his medical license as soon as he leaves this building. <laughs> I'm going to go home and take a uh, very long, long bath. <laughs> you know those... Uh, you how, know, how are you going to internally cleanse? Um, I'm going to give myself a uh, coffee enema. Good. You better like have a spiritual cleansing, too. I'm gonna, you know what it's going to be like? You know those movies when uh, after the woman gets raped yeah, yeah. and then they cut yeah. to the tub yeah, she's where she's just floating in the in the in the water and she has a blank far away stare yeah, yeah. and she's symbolically trying to cleanse herself there you go that's going to be me yeah, yeah. so if i may be masturbating i'm not sure i'm going to play by ear okay uh, okay we'll see what happens yeah all right so until next time this is adam carolla for dr drew saying Mahalo. Then we'll do it in the uh, missionary style for 8.6 minutes. Then I roll you over to Doggy, and I finish you off with more oral. What do you say? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.